and welcome to On The Record. My name is Chris Stanley and I'm here today at the Radio City Music Hall where the World Business Forum is taking place with the legendary designer Philippe Stark. Over the past 35 years of his career, Philippe has worked on thousands of projects ranging from fruit, uh, fruit juice squeezers to furniture to luxurious yachts to incredible hotels, um, constantly pushing boundaries and challenging established criteria. Today we'll be discussing ideas around creativity, innovation, and the origins of Philippe's legendary productivity. Philippe, good to have you with us. Thank you. I mentioned there in the intro, you are uh, famous for having designed a whole wide range of products. You seem to have sort of no limit in terms of uh, projects that you, you, you're prepared to take on. Um, tell us about the process of, of what the process of designing a, an, an orange squeezer has in common with designing a, a hotel. Well, you know, first, we can speak about why, why you create so much, uh, because it's abnormal. I think first uh, you have to be a little sick, uh, a little autist, and uh, uh, if you are completely out of the real life, you dream a lot, and if you are a little lucky, you can dream how you can deserve to exist, uh, how you can, you can serve your community, your civilization, your society. And uh, if you are a little lucky, if you have some ideas, that come automatically. After, it's just a, a work to avoid to produce too much useless things. And uh, during your life, try to reach to the a point where you are useful, which is not so easy. But before everything, that needs some generosity how I can help my friends to have a better life. After, when you are from this platform, uh, uh, this platform is very, very open uh, it, because it's not the product which is important. It's the effect of the project on the society. Uh, how that can show uh, a way of dematerialization, how they can speak about bionism, how I can help uh, people to have things uh, of better quality and cheaper or more easy to find. Uh, American people or English said there is different way to skin a cat and uh, there is different way to help uh, your friends. It's what I do and uh, design a hotel or, uh, or a lemon squeezer or a rocket or a plane or motorcycle. Uh, it's the same thing, exactly the same thing. So uh, you may have gone into it a little bit there, but how do you decide what projects to take on then? I mean, you say you want to help your friends, you want to help humanity. Um, you know, what, what, I presume you get a lot of offers for people to work with you. How do you decide what you want to work on? First, we have to see if the project can bring something new, something disruptive. Uh, we, we was bacteria four billion years ago we become fish, we become frogs, we become monkey, we become super monkey what we are today. And all that will stop in 4 billion point two when the sun will implode and when we shall explode. That means the story is framed 8 billion years. And this is a story of humanity on this world. Perhaps we shall not reach the, the end. Uh, less and less I think we shall reach the end, but it's called evolution. Uh, everybody, everybody uh, uh, have to participate. It's a duty. Nobody need to be a genius. Nobody uh, need to be Einstein, not, uh, Ptolemy, uh, Galileo, Hawkins, uh, but everybody uh, have to work on the scenario of evolution. Uh, everybody everybody uh, have a duty to bring anything he can to that. Some very intelligent people, some genius can bring a mountain, uh, but it's not a subject. You have to do it. Me, uh, I make a job which is not very interesting. Design don't save life. Perhaps design can help to have a better life, but don't save life, which make clearly the limit of uh, the 
obsolescence of this uh, job, but because it's my job, because I know how to do it, I try to make the best possible I do. I try to, to, to push the limit of this job we buy mainly creativity, uh, vision, honesty, respect, and a lot of work to understand what are our real needs and not the needs created by marketing, advertising, and things like that. Because time are changing, rules are changing, energy is changing. Uh, we need now to invent perhaps, I'm not sure, the next chair, but we really need definitely to invent the next society. You say does your work is obsolete, or what you work at is obsolete. Because uh, 20 years ago, we was in a little luxurious time. We can say in the 80s, the 90s. Uh, it was almost cool. And perhaps, uh, I am not sure, but perhaps it was possible to speak about uh, a lamp. Bon, it's not really interesting, but why not? Now, I repeat, time are changing. During this interview, some people will die. Thousands of people will die. We can take just one reason. One, they have no water. Uh, two, they have bad water. Three, they have too much water. Uh, and uh, now, we are not in the subject to make a better life. We are really on the subject to save life immediately. And me, I don't know how to do it. That's why uh, I think I am obsolete. Do you feel bad about that? Really, yes. Imagine you have spent your life to make the best possible your job, and at the end, you see your job is useless. But you see your job has changed then. Maybe 20 years ago, you thought your job did have a purpose, and you're saying it doesn't now? No, I, I am not completely stupid, or I try. Uh, and definitely, since a long time, I try to m take my tool and turn my tool, my job, to make it better and better and better and better, more respectable, more useful. But we shall never save life. Is there a product that, or a project, for example, you took on perhaps 20 years ago that you wouldn't take on today, or vice versa? Because of this change in perspective? No, I have not to, I have not to feel bad about my project and my product because it was always done with honesty, respect, uh, and that it's always good. That gives longevity, that's why uh, uh, the biggest part of my product uh, are success, are bestsellers since 20, 30 years and continue to grow. But, but I know that uh, uh, we have to make things today uh, which are not in my tools. You talked about changing, uh, you talked about creativity a little bit just before. Um, you're known as a, a super creative person. Um, where does your creativity come from? My creativity come from, I repeat, from uh, mental sickness. But from what, sorry? Mental sickness. Ah. Mental sickness and also uh, a way to live. Uh, I think almost everybody can create uh, when he understands that creativity is mainly management of concentration. Management of concentration. Uh, when you concentrate well, you can make everything. Your brain has strictly no limit. But for this, you have to pay the price. That means uh, you have to live like a monk. Don't watch TV, don't go to exhibition, movie, uh, don't go to dinner, uh, don't speak to people. You have to be alone in front of yourself, in front of your uh, vision, your own ethic. We live with my wife in, uh, in, uh, in, in a collection of middle of nowhere, in small cabanas with no electricity, no cars, uh, sometimes no water, just with rainwater, like that I can uh, make my job, which is dreaming. Dreaming uh, 12, 14 hours by day, uh, day after day after day after day. This is the only guarantee to bring uh, a disruptive ID, to bring fresh ID. If you spend your day 
uh, have charming lunch and dinner and cocktail, speaking with everybody, you will always repeat what other people said. But aren't you, uh, but doing it this way, aren't you just doomed to repeat what's in your own head? Unless you're exposed to other ideas and other people are thinking what else is going on in the world, all you're going to be doing is just repeating your own sort of particular mental constraints. It's always the same brain. It's always the same machine. But I repeat, brain have no limit. Especially when you try to deeply understand. Uh, I don't say that I succeed, but I try. When you try to understand, you see how so many new questions, so many uh, problems, so many things to do, because words evolve very, very fast. Every day there is a new question, and, uh, and every day you can say, ah, perhaps I can try to answer to this one. Perhaps I can. And you do it. Do you think you have something special? Do you think this would work for most people? you think most people would, can, can generate this sort of level of creativity by living like a monk, as you say? Is that, do you think it's a problem about the fact that you know, people are so switched on, they're so connected these days? Do you think that people could be more creative if they disconnected? First, you have to know that. Do know that you can do it if you manage your, your concentration. Uh, two, you need to agree to pay the price. It's not a fun life because you don't live your life. You live in your project. That means you live all your life in abstraction, which is a little strange. You live permanently in a cloud, in a gray cloud. Uh, and perhaps, perhaps, there is a, a different, different structure of the brain which uh, give uh, more possibility for creativity. Uh, I see people uh, working and working well. Intelligent people. They build, they build uh, a structure. They start from A, they go to B, to C, to D, orthogonal, very, very smart. And they have good result. Uh, me, uh, I am not intelligent. I am not able to go from A to B to C to D. It's impossible. My, my brain explodes. I cannot. Uh, but I don't say that. I don't speak about the quality of the result. I speak about, I try to describe the process only. But if this person can go to A, B, C, D, me, I go to A to Z without any thinking about it any reflection, it's, deli it's automatically delivered. Uh, and uh, I think this is so special. Uh, perhaps there is a, a, a different structure uh, in the connection, in the synapse. How do you choose the people that you work with um, in your studio? Do they also have this kind of different synapse connection, go from A to Z? I, I know very, 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 very few people uh, who have the same structure. I know perhaps one or two. They have their own business. Uh, they have their own project. And uh, we can speak, and even we don't speak. Uh, they, can, they are friends, but uh, we don't speak about that. No, I, I work with the less people possible and just the people I love. Uh, because uh, the tenderness the love and the respect of love is a key of everything. Because at the end you do, to, you do all that because I hope you love, you love, you love us. Uh, and uh, the love, uh, I'm sorry that look a little ridiculous, uh, but the love uh, uh, is the permanent magic key of this. That's why first I work with my wife, love I uh, exist, I hope. Uh, my wife is the person I speak at 98% uh, and the two other percent, it's people I respect because I think they are able to love and to understand that. Are there any people that you look up to today or maybe in the past in terms of, in terms of design or, or outside of the field? You know, I don't know a lot in design. I don't know a lot. I'm sure there is very nice people, uh, but for me, uh, the masters 
are uh, people like uh, Gandhi, like Einstein, uh, like uh, Ptolemy, who, uh, who uh, 200 years or 1,000, I don't remember, 200 years before Christ, take the exact measurement of the world with one, thi one stick of one foot and two camels and the sun. That is really genius. Uh, I love uh, Platon, uh, Platon, Plateau in English, I think, who said, uh, you know, I saw the shadow of, uh, of our world and it was not square and flat like we think, it was round. And uh, this almost 2,000 years before uh, uh, the Galileo uh, said it. He just said, look at the shadow. And uh, just look at the shadow and understand if the shadow is round, it's round. That looks stupid for us today, but that is the key. Take us through um, when you're starting a project, how you, how you begin to work. And, and also combine that with sort of a secondary question, which is to do with your productivity. A lot of people think, you know, creative, you know, I've got to think for a long time and come up with my great idea and, you know, maybe come up with one great idea a year. You, you're very well known and perhaps uh, uh, what distinguishes you to a certain extent is your ability to just knock things out. You, you are extremely productive. What, where does that come from and how do you not exhaust your sort of reservoirs of creativity? Uh, the first thing to, uh, to understand there is two types of creativity. An idea you have by yourself, and uh, the idea to answer to a question. That means, uh, or somebody arrived to my office and said, can you make this? We accept or no. Uh, or I wake up and I said, hey, we can make this. This is a, a different process. Uh, but uh, always that have to be very, very, very logic. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a w creativity need organization, uh, a lot of organization in your life, uh, in your brain, uh, a lot of work to receive the ID, because I receive the ID, and after to check the ID, to check if it's the right ID. Me, I spend three minutes to receive an ID, to print it, a chair, four minutes, uh, a hotel, two days, it's complicated. A mega yacht, like Steve Jobs, two hours and a half to design everything. But after seven years to check, uh, to check all the details. Uh, that's why it's uh, a mix of something completely magic, which look magic, and af but which have no value if it's not check and check and check and check. The real work is checking if it works if and if that deserves to exist. And so that's an ongoing thing. That process of checking is, is continuous. Yes. So uh, you, I mean, you design a hotel, for example. Mm -hmm. Take us through that. Well, how do you continue that, that process? Well, of for hotel, immediately, uh, I receive uh, a call, uh, darling, uh, because I work always with some people, uh, friends. Uh, can you, do you want to make a new hotel in Seattle? Immediately, I know, in one second, I know what have to be in a hotel in Seattle. Uh, I can design it immediately. But after, we have to go to the professional process. Okay. Design thinking is a term that's used quite a lot today, especially in terms of you know, how, to, how we can be more, create more innovative products and be more innovative through thinking like a designer. Um, what do you understand by the term design thinking? Do you think that is a useful term um, in terms of innovation? If people are wanting, you know, watching this, wanting to think, how can I be more innovative? I don't understand why it's design thinking. Uh, why not dancing thinking? Why not, uh, I have even some other idea. Uh, I think the only one is creative thinking. And even creative thinking, it's so structural at, uh, at, human, at the human being. We are here to create. Uh, we don't exist except our creativity. We are nothing except 
a piece of rope. When you born, you receive from your parents, from your society, from your civilization, a rope. And you, you have to receive this rope, try to understand, look at the new element, and start to make your own rope, your own part of the rope. You have only one obligation, to make a better quality rope. And uh, to give to your society, so the next society, to your children, a better quality rope, and said, now, make better. And uh, everything is a rope. Uh, I'm sorry, my English is not very good, but a rope like that with a lot of uh, fiber. Intertwined. Everything. Yes, absolutely. Li like this, uh, we are just a small part. But the small part have to be the best, and we have to be the best to make the best rope. What are you most proud of having achieved in your career? Is this, this little part of the rope? What, what are you proud of? Uh, what do you think you're going to be leaving um, you know, the next generation? Uh, perhaps that can be interesting to put on my grave. Uh, 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 honest guy who try to help, who try to help. It's not very nice, but something like that. That, that, that have to be humble. First, uh, I don't deserve more. And two, our place is structurally humble. Even a genius, even a real genius, uh, is humble because it's just part of a system. The system is the beauty. The part is just us. Do you think you're a genius? No, absolutely not. Genius are the people who really have made big, big, big breakthrough, big, big things, I repeat, uh, Einstein and things like that. Me, I am just under. But, be, be, but before the level of Einstein and be under, it's a little like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Philippe, thank you so much for taking the time it's today. A pleasure. It's been, been a fascinating conversation. Thank you thank so you. much. And thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the programme. And until the next time, goodbye. Mm -hmm.